beer for Beatles Fest in Chicago, but it's now called the Fest for Beatles Fans. The event attracts fans and collectors from around the world. One of the biggest collectors of them all is Tom Fontaine. And Tom, welcome back to Chicago tonight. Well, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having you me. You know, whenever you come, you show up with these <laughs> items, and I think, where the heck did you get these oh, things? Oh, I tell you what. I mean, it's, you know, I, I just had my uh, 49th birthday yesterday, and I've been doing this for since I was six years old. And I started collecting, and, you know, over a period of time, I just got into it so much and I just never ever stopped. I had a lot of support from my family, had great allowances. Once I, once I finally turned the, uh, my family on to the Beatles, that was really good. <laughs> okay, listen, before we get to the stuff yes, you sir. have on the table, when you were six, what did you collect? I collected Beatle cards. I saw there were some cards that were uh, uh, flying around during a rainstorm and I went outside and I picked them up and put them on my register and I, and I dried, dried them, them off <laughs> and I saw what they were and I started going to my Uncle Johnny's store and he saw that they were Beatle cards and threw about 10 packs and at a time, I tell you what, I went to the store every Saturday with my mom for the whole year because he kept on throwing them in there. <laughs> oh, good for you. Okay, listen, you brought some stuff in. What? First of all, tell me about the uh, that beret, that hat that you the had. The beret, it is, that is actually John Lennon's beret, and that was on the uh, Grammys in uh, February of 1975. He was on with Paul Simon, and uh, Andy Williams was the host on that, and um, actually... Uh, John auctioned that off in uh, May of 1975 at the Helping Hand Marathon in Philadelphia, and he actually signed it, but he signed it in black on black. So, and so you I'm, can't, well, a lot of can people you make can it see out? it. I can't. I'm colorblind. So, but some other people have been able to see it, and yeah, it's it's definitely there. Where did you get it? Well, I got it. Uh, actually, it was in an auction in England, and um, I knew what it was, and I just you know put a bid on it and just hope for the best because that's what I do. I put a maximum bid on something, otherwise. I may have to sell my house, so therefore I, I just put a, you know what I felt like it was going to be, and I, I ended up winning it. Is it tacky to ask you how much you paid for it? Yeah, I paid around forty five hundred for it. Forty five hundred. Wow. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. I'm a big London fan. What do you have right next to it? Right here is the uh, cream of the cream as far as uh, Beatles toys are concerned, but this is the actual record player that was released in 1965. And what's so neat about it, there was a very limited of them, uh, and I believe they were $29.95. And of course, in 1964, that was kind of oh, expensive. Sure. And these kind of vary. I mean, these are what it is. That I call was the, it the iPod of its day. You know, and I also call it the photographer's dream. I tell you, when you look at it and it sits in, in place, it's just, a, it's just this beautiful piece. And actually, what I did was I put, I want to hold your hand 45 on there for just, you know. Just that, for a presentation. It had Does to be, it actually it work? That. It actually works. Really? It really does. It makes a couple tick, tick, tick noises, but other than that, it works fine. You know what? If it didn't have those tick, tick noises, you'd wonder if it was authentic. Good point. <laughs> okay, what else do you have here from the Beatles that you think is uh, pretty good? Well, cool? I tell you what, this is a, 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 an actual for TV people is a bumper card, and that's actually signed by all four Beatles for Thank You Lucky Stars. And what's neat about that is that the actual film of that certain broadcast has been lost. So the only thing left that had anything to do with the Beatles is that card right there, but it's also signed by all four of them. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know you're an expert on uh, Beatles signatures. Uh, can you spot a fake? Oh, yeah. Can yeah, you? I really can. And it's because it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of work, a lot of investigating and checking out and everything like that. And that's why, actually, what I did for the fans and collectors, I did a Beatles autograph study. And that's really, really helped a lot of people because I, I started from 1960 all the way up to today because, obviously, a lot of variations of the signatures, but I, I get a lot of comments and they're really, really happy with the, the study I did. If somebody has a collection of all four of their autographs, uh, what is that worth? Oh, I tell you right now, it's getting to be around the minimum about a set of four is like uh, on like a one piece of paper mm -hmm. is 6000 and up. Wow. All right, uh, what else do you have here? Well, let's see, we've got a couple things. This Miami is kind of an interesting thing. When the Beatles uh, were at the uh, Peppermint Lounge in Miami, they arrived uh, February 14th. Uh, 1964 Valentine's Day and uh, this uh, this drink card is a uh, peppermint lounge drink card was signed for one of the waitresses and it's an interesting story because she asked um, uh, actually Brian Epstein said would you like to have an autograph from the boys and she said no <laughs> and so he just thought oh uh, what do you mean by that? So he went over there and marched over and got all four of them to sign. He says, well, you're going to take one anyway. Wow. I bought that from her about, about a year and a half, two, two years ago. But great story on it. Uh, another great story is how you, got, how you got one of these shirts or the story behind the shirt. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, the John Lennon Tiberio shirt. Yeah. You can what, pull what that right there. Believe it or not, that's John Lennon's shirt. I know it looks awful small. Golly, but the interesting guy. story about this is when they were in Cold Spring Harbor, uh, John's uh, assistant, uh, Fred Seaman, 
uh, was with them, and they, what happened was is it was infested by fleas, the, the house. So they had to completely clear out everything out of the drawers. And, he, and finally, what he, and John just said, oh, just take them. And then over a period of time, Fred started to sell them. And I was fortunate enough to get one. <laughs> now, how do you know John actually wore this? Well, it, it, I have an affidavit from Fred Seaman and everything, and, and, and obviously it's also published in two or three books, including his own, about the infested fleas. There were shirts galore and jackets and everything. John said, I'm not going to wear those things. You just get rid of them. Okay, if somebody wanted to buy this T-shirt, how much would it cost? Well, that one, since it hasn't really never been photographed, you know, I, could, I think I, we talked about last time, photo ID'd. I would probably sell it for about three or 4000 Three or four thousand? Yeah, yeah. It's really it's very reasonably priced because usually when you get something photo ID'd, that's when it starts shooting up. Matter of fact, there was an item just recently in an auction of John's uh, uh, jacket went for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow! A jacket. All right. So well, listen. Uh, there's a big anniversary coming up, and that is the uh, well, an anniversary coming up of the death of Elvis Presley. That's correct. You brought in some Elvis Presley uh, yeah, things. Yeah. What did I you bring sure in? Did. Yeah, I sure did. Um, this is a great photo, actually. Uh, when Elvis was oh, doing this a, one right here. Yeah, he was doing a flight, and actually he wrote uh, to Bob. He says, "Thank you for the wonderful flight, Elvis Presley." And that's right around the time of the '68 uh, comeback tour. And then we also have here is this this uh, wooden thing. That is a tiki necklace. That was Elvis's um, good luck charm, and he wore that. He bought that when he was doing uh, Blue Hawaii in 1961. You know, it looks like it goes. It looks like it goes in that room where he's got all that monkey wood furniture it, it, and bracelets. Exactly, he was into some interesting <laughs> things, and, and, and that's pretty um, hideous. Yeah. Well, what he did was he gave that to Joe Smith, who actually is Billy Smith's wife, and Billy is Elvis's cousin, and that's that's how I end up getting it. And then right in front of there, I think the tickets kind of fell a little bit there, but there is. We'll Hold do up. that real quick. There's a there's a uh, turquoise ring, and that's Elvis Presley's turquoise pinky ring. And uh, with that, uh, Elvis and uh, Ronnie Tut, his drummer for all those years, uh, they went shopping with their respective this wives. Is, this is a pinky ring. That's a pinky ring. Oh, that's a pinky ring. Yeah. And uh, nothing understated about the king. Nothing understated, okay. but that's why we love him. Absolutely. That's why we love him. What else do you have? Well, I tell you what. Um, obviously, I've got some things from the day the music died. Uh, and with, the day uh, the music died is when B Buddy Holly, uh, Big Richie Bopper, Valens, and, and the Big Richie Bopper. Valens, February third, nineteen fifty nine, and I. I got a signature of Richie Valens, nicely uh, matted up, mm -hmm. and then here is a um, here's a Buddy Holly autograph. That's interesting because it's on the back of it is from uh, is from it was signed in Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is uh, was the uh, last Winter Dance Party tour. That was uh, less than a week and a half before he died, and then this one here, the Big Bopper's Wedding, this sheet music. Uh, this will give you chills, but this actually was in the briefcase at the crash site. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and wow. I've got an affidavit letter from actually uh, J.P. Richardson. Let's take a look at that real quick so people can see what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, J.P. Richardson's uh, uh, son uh, basically did a nice affidavit on that, and that was actually at the crash site. Very interesting stuff. But uh, and the one last thing, too, I, I have to tell you, this is, a, this is a good one, too, is that is an American bandstand contract signed by Jim Morrison when they were on oh, the, the doors? doors. Yeah. Jim Morrison's signature is like close to impossible to get, and uh, to get a document that was that was a coup. I was really happy about that one. Is that uh, that's is that Jim Morrison's social security number? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, oops, oops, oops. Oh, okay. and last thing, last thing we have here is I just wanted to show you. This is kind of cool. Jimi Hendrix. Uh, it's a it's a Woodstock ticket signed by Jimi Hendrix. It's the only one known that's ever surfaced in the world. All right. And he signed it and did a little heart over it. And oh, I'll tell you what, I could just go on for on, but there you go. So Interesting stuff. Tom, good to see you again. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Our pleasure, Tom. Thank you.